Hello, the Noel Michaels from Restore in Loughton. My name's Claudia. My name's Trey. My name's Caleb. Today we have a reading for you, taken from the New International Version of the Bible. We're reading Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Joseph accepts Jesus as his son. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in, his, in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to make Mary to take Mary home as your wife, because what is con conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give the, the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Thank you for my Advent calendar. And thank you for all the lovely things you have done for us during lockdown and for all the words of encouragement. It's been amazing. So we just want to say a prayer now for Stuart, who is leading us in our worship today. Dear Father God, we'd like to pray for Stuart today. Um, we'd like to give Stuart the strength and the power to give us some really good words today um, to help us to understand Christmas and the true meaning behind Christmas. Help us to take away some good messages from Stuart's worship today. Thank you, dear Lord. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Good morning, everyone, and welcome uh, to the Restore Living Room, which is looking rather festive, I think you'll agree, and hopefully I fit in with my current favourite Christmas jumper. Uh, welcome to our service today. Uh, we're continuing our series talking about hope, uh, in fact, hope has been kind of a key thing for us uh, all this year so far. Um, if you've uh, received one of our doorstep deliveries, you'll know this verse from Romans 15, 13 about hope has been really key. It says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And really, that is God's desire for us, that we would know his hope and then overflow with it to everyone else around. And um, We've probably had longer to talk about Christmas and the season of Advent this year than ever before, um, partly because of all the restrictions and the changes, but it means we've had a couple of weeks about Christmas already and we're not even at our activity nativity, which is next week. Uh, for the first week, I don't know if you joined us or not, but um, we had uh, Ian speaking on the story of Zachariah who was visited by the angel and was given a promise, something to hope on, and his response needed to be to listen. Secondly, we had uh, Jodie speaking last week on Mary. She was visited by an angel as well. And her response had to be to wait. And this week we're looking at Joseph. And Joseph has to respond by acting, by responding proactively in a way different to how he anticipated. And we'll have a look at that in a bit more detail in a minute. But it's all three looking at hope, and how people responded to these angelic visitations, which are all over the Christmas story if you have a look at it. But hope is the key thing. And I don't know about you, but, but this year it seems like people are grabbing onto Christmas in a whole new way. It seems like there's more Christmas songs being released by people than ever before. And it feels like people have put their hope into Christmas in a way that I haven't seen for many years. Um, for a while now, you've probably noticed that things uh, enter the shops, shopping wise, earlier and earlier. But this year, it feels like people just need something good to put their hope in. And so surely at this time, up should ride the church. Uh, the church should rise up and say, this is our moment. Let's be the ones who are uh, bringing the hope that we have. 
because personally this year I've felt hopeless at different points. I've felt alone. I've felt overwhelmed. And it's at exactly this point that we need to say, where is our hope? Where are we putting it in? Uh, what is the thing that is going to define us as God's people? And I think the year has been full of disappointments. And the problem with disappointment is because disappointment dulls our expectancy of God. When we're disappointed, we don't believe as much. We don't have as much faith. We don't lift ourselves in the same way. And so we need to check what are the disappointments that we're still carrying that we need to lay down. And another verse that speaks into the same thing uh, is from Proverbs 13, 12. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And this verse is really talking about how when you put your hope in something and then it doesn't work out the way you thought it would, actually it can leave you feeling sick. It can leave you feeling like, why didn't that work the way I wanted it to? Why didn't things pan out the way I wanted it to? And maybe there's not a more relevant verse for this year when things have gone so different to how we planned, that our hope being deferred makes the heart sick. And there's been so much change. Uh, firstly, it was daily change, then it was weekly, and now we're into months. And the longer it goes on, the harder it is to know where do we stand? Where do we put our foundations? Where do we put our sense of knowing? Uh, where, what, where, when are we okay? What are the things that say, no, this is all right? And so many of the things that made up what our life was uh, aren't the same anymore. And so at this point, we need to say, where is the thing that anchors us? Where do we anchor our hope? Not in something that's going to make us feel sick, but in something that is eternal and that lasts forever. And that is where we have our faith and our hope in Jesus. There's a verse here from Hebrews 6, and it says, We have this hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. Surely if there's any time we've needed to know our hope this year, being firm and secure in God, it is in this pandemic season and to know the bible to know the power of the word of god to root ourselves into the truth of god and the importance of doing that the importance of regularly opening the bible and engaging with it for yourself cannot be underestimated as you read the bible it should refresh your hope it should remind you of the truth about god and I want to read a few of my favourite verses on hope to you this morning because they lift my spirit. They, they excite my soul because they are truth and they are worth putting my hope in. Here's the first one from Colossians 1. To us, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The next one, Ephesians 1. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Hebrews 10. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And then Romans 5, 5. Wrote, um, Lauren read a bit of this already. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I love that. I love those verses that we won't be put to shame if we hope in God, if we trust in God. And the Holy Spirit will cause that to grow up in us and overflow. There's never been a time like this time where the hope that's in us as people who know Jesus she just needs to overflow to all the people around us who are struggling and finding it so hard. It doesn't mean we don't find it hard, but it means that we know that we have a hope that we can secure our lives in that is firm and secure. And we had a great reading there about the story of Joseph. Joseph, what an incredible character in this story to have a look at today probably an ignored character or one kind of on the sidelines if you don't really think about it. Jesus obviously is centre stage. Mary has a very key role to play, but Joseph is more in the background. He's kind of just doing his thing. He's engaged to be married to Mary. And then, would you believe it, his wedding plans, everything that he thought was going to happen 
didn't happen. It was all changed. Now, I know a few of you can particularly relate to this part of the story. Engaged, wedding plans, totally changed. And yet here, God's purpose triumphs Joseph and Mary's plans. Amazingly, they both react well and they play their part in the story. They never could have thought or realised the significance of their obedience to God or the impact their small act of obedience and trust would have. And we need to have the same attitude today, not needing to know all the answers, but being willing to be obedient. Joseph decides to act and trust and obey what he was told. He's given the responsibility of protecting Jesus and Jesus' mother. What an important time to do that. When Jesus was at his most vulnerable, he needed Joseph to be there, and he was. Joseph is given the name. He's told the name is going to be Jesus. And he's even told something of who Jesus would grow up to be. Something his original design, his purpose, that he would save his people from their sins. Now, as if the unexpected pregnancy isn't enough, along with the immaculate conception, the second surprise they get is the census that requires everyone to return to their hometown and means a nine month pregnant Mary needs to get on a donkey and travel a very long way. Not only that, but when they arrive at their destination, there is nowhere to stay. It speaks to me of poor planning. And so if you're thinking, well, that wasn't well planned, that wasn't well organised, that should have been very different, then you'll be feeling some of the emotions of this year. This year, there's been all kinds of things where we've thought, why is it like this? Whose idea is it for this to happen? It's a kind of uh, not being able to wrap your head around what's going on. And that was it. Whose idea was it for it to happen like this? And I think it's a question lots of us have been asking through the year. But Joseph rises up and he responds in the best possible way. You could tell he was an honourable man from the way that he was actually going to respond before he, he uh, was spoken to by the angel. He had decided actually he was going to go through with the marriage. He was then going to divorce her quietly to avoid causing her extra shame. But actually, when he's spoken to, when he's told the plan and his part in it, when he's invited to obey and be part of it, that is when he responds well. And we just have to say, well done, Joseph. Let's look at the specific verses that show how he responds. Verse 24 and 25. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. Now, for our hope to be alive, we need to put it into practice. It needs to lead to obedience and action and generosity and kindness and all these good things that should come from us following God and his life bubbling up in us. Galatians 5 talks of some of the fruits of the spirit, that we should show love and joy and peace and goodness and gentleness and self-control should rise up from a life that has the Holy Spirit in it. And there's a quote that I saw this year that I thought was really, really good in reframing what that means. And it's by a guy called Michael Timmis. He says this, I believe that joy is love rejoicing. Peace is love at rest. Patience is love waiting. Kindness is love interacting. Goodness is love initiating. Faithfulness is love keeping its word. Gentleness is love empathising and self-control is love resisting temptation. Isn't that great? I love that. If the greatest commandment we're given is to love, then what a better way to understand that than through the fruits of the Spirit, the, the things that the Holy Spirit helps us to do even better than we could do on our own. Some of these things, I look at people that don't know God and I think, actually, you're really good at this. You're really loving. You're really peaceful. You're really generous. But actually, the Holy Spirit in us allows us to do those things with God's strength and God's ability. And that's the thing that we need to do is we try and reframe the story that we're in this year. 
Um, and there's, a, there's one final quote I want to use today. It's from Alistair McGrath, and he says the following. The story we believe we're in determines what we think about ourselves and consequently how we behave. The story we believe we're in determines what we think about ourselves and consequently how we behave. So I wonder what story you think you're in. I wonder how you've pieced together the pieces of this year so far. Uh, if you're like me, um, I love films, so I would use films to kind of depict some of the, the things. The story of this year, does it look like uh, a Groundhog Day for you? Uh, does it look like the Titanic? Like, what is the film that you think best represents what 2020 has been from you? Um, maybe type it on the chat if there's a particular film you think, oh, the year has been like this. Because understanding how we're framing the story and how we're framing ourselves in it, in terms of our thinking and our behaviour, will really help in terms of how we're living. Because some of how we're living right now is just responding to everything that's going on, and that's totally understandable. But as Christians, we also have the hope of Jesus inside us, which changes everything. So it's worth saying, how do we live in the way that God wants us to? Because God's master plan was for Jesus to come as a baby, to live and to grow up and to show us an example of what it means to live God's way. And then to die and be resurrected so that we could have the Holy Spirit's power living in us, that we would be his hands and his feet making a difference in this world. That's God's plan. That's part of the story that you are in. And you're invited to play a part in that. You're invited to rise up like Joseph did in obedience to what God's saying to you. And maybe you're not sure what God's saying to you right now. Take some time to pray and to say, God, what do you have for me to do today? Maybe there's one thing, one person, one family, something God has for you to do. Maybe it's just to pray a prayer of blessing over someone that you know is struggling. Maybe it's to visit them. Maybe it's a phone call. There's lots of things we can do, but it's best to be led by God into those things. What are the things that God is leading us to? Our vision at Restore is to see everyone full of the love of God and overflowing with the hope of God so that we might be the people that can bring some of God's transformation and restoration into the communities around us. Why don't we pray together as we finish this morning that God will show us the way. God will help us to carry his love and carry his hope. And that he will lead us into the things he has for us to do. And if that's, while that's happening, if the band could come back as well. Father God, we want to say thank you. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you for the example of Joseph being willing to act, being willing to lay down his own agenda, his own way he thought it was going to go. Father, at this time, we look to you. We say, God, would you give us direction? Would you point us towards the people you have for us to engage with today? And may each one of us take up the challenge of being involved, of taking something of your hope and of your love to others. Thank you that it starts with worship. It starts with engaging with you for ourselves. And as we do that, your love and your hope overflow in us. Father, we pray, would you give us a word this morning? Would you speak to us and challenge us? Father, lead us and guide us that we might be as obedient as Joseph and as faithful as he was. God, fill us with your spirit fresh. Fill us with your love and give us eyes to see the people around us that you're calling us to. That we would believe that we can make a difference, that our disappointments wouldn't dull the expectancy in our hearts, but that faith would rise about all that you can do through each one of us. Father, we commit ourselves to you. We commit ourselves to this journey of doing this together. And we pray, would you help us? Lead us and guide us. 
In Jesus' name, amen.